A new study sponsored by the National Institutes of Health has found that kids who play video games for at least three hours a day have better memory and impulse control than non-gamers. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... I'm not the kind of person who would say, I told you so to my mom <laughs> because she could still whip my ass, but, uh... I told you so. <laughs> yeah. She's not, okay. Just making sure. Just making sure she's not behind me. But yeah, it turns out <laughs> gamers have great impulse control. So the next time a teenager calls you the N-word in a game of Call of Duty, he rarely thought it through. <laughs> in travel news, Virgin Australia has announced that for the next six months, anyone who selects a middle seat will be automatically entered into a lottery with more than $230,000 worth of prizes up for grabs. Yeah. And here's my first question. Is one of the prizes an aisle seat? Because, <laughs> I mean, that's the only way I'm ever selecting a middle seat on a plane. <laughs> Plus, winning the lottery makes it worse. Now I'm in the middle seat and the aisle and window seats are looking to rob my ass. It's just like, <laughs> well, well, if it isn't Mr. Jackpot, oh, leave me alone. <laughs> oh, here's one of the strangest human interest stories I've ever heard. A hermit known as the world's dirtiest man, right, actually known as that, has died at the age of 94. But get this, just a few months after bathing for the first time in 60 years. <laughs> Which is a real lesson here, guys. <laughs> Don't try anything new because it will kill you. <laughs> it will. Oh, and, and more importantly, congratulations to the new world's dirtiest man, Steve Bannon. Well done. <laughs> All right, let's move on to some of the biggest stories of the day. Starting once again with the midterms. You know, that time of the year when your baby is at the highest risk of being kissed by Ted Cruz. There was a major debate last night that could change everything. And we'll tell you all about it in our ongoing coverage of Vote Demic 2022. <laughs> the big question leading up to election day right now is who will control the Senate when the dust settles? And with so many close races around the country, it could still go either way. But a pivotal moment may have occurred last night at a debate in Pennsylvania. On one side of this neck-and-neck -neck race, you have Democrat John Fetterman, lieutenant governor and bouncer on the set of Jerry Springer. <laughs> and on the Republican side, you have Dr. Oz, not to be confused with the Wizard of Oz, who also lived in a mansion that wasn't in Pennsylvania. <laughs> now, after securing the Republican nomination, Dr. Oz has been trying to distance himself from the MAGA side of the force and reposition himself as a bipartisan voice of reason to try and scoop up all the centrist voters on election day. You know, he's basically doing that, that TikTok thing where you flip your hair down and then when you come up, you act like you suddenly didn't want to hang Mike Pence. You know that thing? <laughs> but here's the thing, here's the thing. Being pro-Trump and pro-reasonable is a lot harder than people think, which was apparent when Dr. Oz had to explain his position on abortion. Should abortion be banned in America? 60 seconds. There should not be involvement from the federal government in how states decide their abortion decisions. As a physician, I've been in the room when there's some difficult conversations happening. I don't want the federal government involved with that at all. I want women, doctors, local uh, political leaders letting the democracy that's always allowed our nation to thrive to put the best ideas forward so states can decide for themselves. Oh, yeah, that's right. Dr. Oz said abortion rights should be decided by women and their doctors and local political leaders. <laughs> Which was pretty slick, right? I like how he did it, because he, he started that sentence like he was on the side of women. And then he snuck in the politicians at the end, like a teenager buying condoms at a gas station. <laughs> He's like, oh, let me get those Cheetos and the root beer, and can I get the Trojan condom, please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get the Trojan at the back. Let's be honest, if, if you're pro-choice, what Dr. Oz is suggesting is bullshit, right? I think we can all agree, there is only one politician who should have a say in your abortion, and that's Herschel Walker, because it's his. It's his. <laughs> it's probably his. Ladies, check. They're all his. <laughs> now, unfortunately, the Democrats couldn't exactly take a victory lap after Dr. Oz's performance at the debate, because it was their own guy who was getting most of the attention. Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman started off the hour-long debate assuring voters he's still capable of doing the job of senator five months after having a stroke. Let's also talk about the elephant in the room. I had a stroke. He's never let me forget that. I might miss some words during this debate, 
mush two words together, but it knocked me down, but I'm going to keep coming back up. Fetterman's use of a closed captioning device during the debate where he read questions in real time on a screen above the moderators sparked debate on social media, with some observers seeing a strong performance amid recovery, while others cast him as unsteady. Fetterman especially lost his footing on the subject of fracking when questioned about a 2018 interview where he said he would never support the industry versus his current position supporting fracking. I, I, I do support fracking. And I don't, I don't, I support fracking and I stand and I do support fracking. You know, what's interesting to see is how people have reacted to this clip, you know? Because on the one hand, obviously that was a part of the debate that tripped him up because he has had a shaky record on whether he's for or against the fracking. But also beyond that, people were wondering about the stroke. And it was interesting to see if people support him, they're seeing a guy who's overcoming a temporary disability. But then the people who are against him see a guy who's not mentally fit to be senator. And I guess because of polarization, it's like that with everything these days. You know, everyone's seeing the world from two different sides. Like, if you're a diehard Christmas lover, you hate the Grinch. <laughs> but if you don't like Christmas, then yeah, he's extremely f***able and you'd smash. <laughs> everything is subjective, everything. Look at that mouth. And I, I personally feel bad for John Fetterman, though, because he had a stroke, and on top of that, after the debate, Dr. Oz tried to sell him a supplement that would cure him for $59.99. <laughs> you know, if you ask me, I don't know why Fetterman ever admitted to having a stroke. This is American politics. You know, he could have just done whatever he wanted, right? He's running for the senator of Pennsylvania. He could have just showed up to the debate and be like, sorry for my words, everyone, I'm drunk off my ass. The entire state would have been like, hell yeah, man, save here, go Phillies, yeah! <laughs> I love this guy, Woo! But the truth is, Fetterman's limitations right now are just something voters will have to consider when they make their choice. Like, maybe they don't care whether Fetterman is capable of debating. Maybe voters prefer his policies. Or maybe they just want a senator who can block the door the next time it's getting stormed by rioters. That could be very useful. <laughs> it's all up to them. Anyway, let's move on and talk about natural disasters. Because no matter where you live, they could happen to you. One minute you're buying groceries, then an earthquake hits, and boom, you're buried alive. <laughs> or you're hiking, suddenly an avalanche hits, boom, you're buried alive. <laughs> or you're at home, you're at home watching TV, a tornado hits, picks you up, rips off all your clothes, then throws you through your neighbor's window into the bedroom with his wife right as your neighbor walks in. <laughs> he knocks you out with a shovel, and boom, buries you alive. Happens all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Rest in peace, Uncle. But here's some good news. If you've been buried alive by a natural disaster, there's a new first responder who might be coming to your aid. An unlikely hero is being trained to help search and rescue teams during natural disasters. We're talking about rats. The rodents are fitted with tiny high-tech backpacks carrying video cameras. The project created by Belgian nonprofit trains the rats to help first responders search for survivors among rubble and disaster zones. Once they locate the target, they pull a switch on their little vest that triggers a beep before heading back to the trainers to get a treat. And the leader of the project says rats are perfect for the job since they're small, curious, and prone to explore. Oh! Oh, my God, that's so adorable! Did you see the little backpack and the tiny camera? I want to be rescued by one of them! Oh! Oh, lock the doors! Let's blow the building up! You're gonna thank me when there's a bunch of cute rats saving all of us. No, but for real, though, this, this is incredible. This is incredible. Just, just take a moment. So think of some of the things that rats can do, huh? They can sniff out landmines, right? They can detect tuberculosis. In New York City restaurants, they taste our food before we eat it. <laughs> and yet, do we appreciate them? No! We're terrible to them. We're terrible to rats. We don't treat them with any respect. In fact, we've got to pray that if we are ever trapped under the rubble, we've really got to hope that the rat that comes to rescue us doesn't hold a grudge. <laughs> But isn't the guy who tested that toxic makeup on my cousin? <laughs> oh, look, you can't move your arms. Oh, they worked fine when you were putting out all those traps, though, didn't they, huh? <laughs> Bet you wish you hadn't appropriated my culture for your Chuck E. Cheese now, huh? 
Yeah, why don't you rescue yourself, you little bitch? I'm gonna go poop in a Cheerios box. Bye! Okay. I just realized at some point my mom's gonna be like, what do you do at your job? I'm like, don't, don't worry. <laughs> All right, finally, here's a, a really fun story from the world of higher education. You know, universities are always doing the utmost to try and stop students from cheating, and for good reason, for good reason. You don't want students to cheat, right? Because you don't want someone cheating their way through engineering and then one day building a bridge, all right? Or, or what if someone cheats their way through 14th century Italian poetry? I don't even need to tell you the chaos <laughs> that that would unleash on society. <laughs> but one professor in the Philippines is going viral for how she decided to stop cheating in her class. The Washington Post says a Philippines college professor asked her students to wear anti-cheating hats for a midterm exam, and they went all out. The students showed up for their mechanical engineering test this month wearing all sorts of designs on their heads. Photos of the students in their headgear went viral, though, on local news. All right, I don't know who this professor is, but that's genius, right? <laughs> I love that. No, no, because instead of just telling kids not to cheat, obstruct their field of vision. Because most of the time, teachers can't actually stop anyone from cheating, all right? The best they can do is walk up and down the aisles like a pigeon looking for pieces of bread, you know? <laughs> Just do that thing. Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> I like the system. It helps the students focus, and it removes the temptation. Because let's be honest, it, that's what it, it's temptation. Most of the time, cheating is a spur-of-the-moment thing, right? You don't go into the test intending to cheat. What happens is you realize you know none of the answers. <laughs> and then you notice out of the corner of your eye that Angie's flying. <laughs> and now, if you know that you're probably wrong, why would you just stick with your wrong answers, right? In a real world situation, we want to encourage people to go with whoever has the best ideas. It's not cheating, it's called having an open mind, people. <laughs> You've gotta explore your opportunities. That's why my uncle was in his neighbor's bedroom's wife with, with this. <laughs> All right, that's it for the headlines. But before we go to a quick break, let's check in on the stock market with our very own finance expert, Michael Costa, everybody. <laughs> Michael, crazy time, man. Crazy, crazy time in the markets right now. What's happening? I am crushing it. I mean, you might need to call a rescue rat because my crushing has caused a lot of people to be trapped under rubble, so. <laughs> Well, that, that sounds like your financial advice has buried people in debt. Well, if, and, and if you want to get out of that debt, I got a hot tip for you, so stay tuned, okay? All right, let's do it. All right, let's do it. So this week, multiple corporations had their third quarter earnings reports, which included Google and Microsoft, both of whom had disappointing numbers, okay? But before we get into that, that the, the, the rescue rats, Yeah. right? I found this story so useful. Okay? When my landlord came by to evict me because of a rat infestation, I told him, hey, you're wrong. I'm actually training an elite group of search and rescue rats. It bought me 24 hours. But you're right, Trevor, animals are amazing. I mean, pigs can hunt truffles. Dolphins are helping the Navy with their sonar. My dog, he'll lick peanut butter off my body wherever I put it, okay? Look, oh. look, look, that's what? not a sex thing. I just eat peanut butter sloppily, okay? And I heard, Trevor, that in Africa that you can hang wet laundry on a rhinoceros's horn? No, Michael, that is, that is not true. That is so it's dumb. It's not true. Oh, because you don't have laundry. I, no. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, honestly. I'm this so guy, well, you know, can you just okay, get to okay, the... Okay, well, but here's the thought. Anybody ask what cats do, you know? Well, how do they contribute to society? To me, it seems like cats have nine lives and they're wasting every single one of them. <laughs> If you were trapped under your building and your cat saw you, it would yawn and go back to sleep. Or even worse, it would kill a rat, the one thing that's trying to save your ass. <laughs> it, Trevor's right. Cat, rats need more respect. That's why it's called rat spec, okay? <laughs> Think about it. They're basically firemen, okay? And, and that's why it wasn't weird that I made a sexy rat calendar. What is this even? Michael, uh, can uh, you just get to uh, the markets? Let's, let's do the markets. Okay. Okay? Let's do no more rats. sexy rats. Can you just... Let's, let's do the markets. All right. So, <laughs> Alphabet, okay, which is Google's parent company, I, I binged it, all right, and Microsoft <laughs> both had their quarterly earnings calls, which were so bad, it led the stock to a dramatic fall. Look at that. 
Which makes me say to all the company owners, if you know your earnings calls are gonna be so bad, why are you making that call, okay? <laughs> if you have bad news, don't call people. I didn't call my landlord when I found 93 rats in my apartment. I put little bells and backpacks on them, and now I gave them names. I'm helping society. So look, this is Google and Microsoft. Everything's going fine, right? There was a little dip here in October 24th, but that's not a big deal. The guy that draws the lines actually just sneezed. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> but what the hell is going on here? Well, turns out Microsoft's cloud company didn't generate as much revenue as they thought. Well, obviously, clouds just disappear, right? But <laughs> the bigger drop came from Google. Ad revenue's down on YouTube because advertisers don't want to advertise to us knowing the economy's struggling and we don't want to buy anything. Well, well, you don't. I'm crushing it, okay? But <laughs> here's some advice to YouTube. If your ad revenue is down and it's affecting your stock, why are you letting us skip ads? Of course I'm gonna skip your ad for Rogaine. My toupee is perfect, okay? <laughs> no other company has a skip revenue button. CVS doesn't have a skip payment button. They do have those self-checkout things, though, and those are pretty much the same thing. <laughs> hey, hot tip, hot tip to media companies. Force your viewers to watch profitable ads. Trevor, throw it a commercial. No, Costa, don't tell me what to do. All right. Okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. Sorry. Yeah, I'm going to do whatever I want. All right, we're going to go to a commercial break right now. Uh, Michael Costa, everybody. <laughs>